One of my bonuses for you this course is to talk about phone romance and courtship. So this is a body language course, so obviously um, talking about the verbal techniques of attraction and seduction are not a huge emphasis, but I did want to talk about voice tone and the nonverbal cues that can happen over the phone. The reason why I included this bonus is because a lot of people engage in phone courtship without even realizing it. First, if they're online dating, they often end up doing phone calls before they go on a real date. And sometimes in between real dates, you're talking on the phone with someone, or you could be doing long distance or temporary long distance. And voice tone is hugely important. Joe Palka found that when we don't like someone's voice, we tend to tune them out completely or ignore them. And this has been repeated over and over again, especially for men. Men typically listen to a woman's voice with the same part of their brain that they use to listen to music. So for women especially, if, that, if your voice isn't tapping into a part of their brain that they like, they actually can ignore it or tune it out just like music in the background of their car. So it's very important that you use voice, voice to be able to convey your true feelings as well as connect with someone. There are four things that we convey with our voice tone, and the first thing is trust. So I wanted to share with you a very interesting experiment that looked at doctors' voices. And what the researchers did, it was Nalini Ambadi at Tufts University, and she took 10-second clips of doctors. And she warbled the words, so you couldn't understand the words that were being said, but the voice tone was left completely intact. And she played these 10-second voice clips voice tone clips for participants. She had participants rate the doctors on credibility. And she found that people who rated the doctors as highly credible, those doctors had lower incidence of malpractice lawsuits. And the doctors with voice tones who got very low credibility ratings had the highest amount of malpractice lawsuits. So what this shows us is that we actually gauge how much we can trust someone based on their voice tone. The question that this study brings up is, you know, what comes first? Is someone who's untrustworthy, um, is, it chicken or egg? is it chicken or the egg? Is, is someone who's untrustworthy also have an untrustworthy voice tone that we know to pick up on? Or do we just deem someone as untrustworthy and then we're more likely to sue them for malpractice lawsuits with no bearing on their actual skill? So, our voice tone really dictates the long term of how, we, how much we trust someone. The second thing we convey is credibility. Now, leaders use their voice in very powerful ways. We talk a little bit more about that in our influence course. But I wanted to show you a very quick clip of Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher ran for prime minister in the UK and she won. And she was trained by the famous actor Laurence Olivier, who basically said to her, your voice tone is too high. People will not trust you if you don't have a lower voice tone. And so he trained her to go into the lowest end of her natural tone. So she dropped her voice so that it was still natural, but she stayed in that low end so that she could increase her credibility. And I wanted to show you a clip of her before she got her training and after she got her training. And just listen to the voice tone and how much more you take her seriously when her voice is lower. I've been so busy that I haven't had really much time to think about it. After all, I know I'm still only me, and so do my family. But I'm very much aware of the responsibilities and a little bit apprehensive. Who wouldn't be when you think of the names that I follow? Let me answer that very deeply because I feel very strongly about it. The greatest divisions this nation has ever seen were the conflicts of trade unions towards the end of a Labour government. Incredible, right? I mean, just, you want to pay attention to the second one. She has high credibility. The first one is interesting, but you tend to tune her out. If I were to ask you what she said in that clip, you probably would have a very hard, a much harder time remembering the first one than the second one. So in order to increase your credibility, I want you to stick with the lowest natural end of your tone, and this is for both men and women. And the way that you do this is when you are speaking, you take deeper breaths and then relax your voice tone so that you speak on the out breath. So when we are nervous, when, we're, when we are tense, our vocal cords tend to tighten and, they, and then our voice tone increases and it goes into a higher pitch. So I have retrained my voice to stay very low when I speak. I used to be much higher when I spoke, especially in business situations. And so I've trained myself that when I hear myself where I feel my vocal cords tense, I breathe in and then I speak on the out breath. So this is something that you can practice. Um, you can decide that you want to identify this as one of your areas to practice. Start on your own, record yourself talking, 
then do that low pressure practice, then practice with a friend, and then you can start bringing it out into the real world. The third thing we know from voice tone is personality. So Phil McAleer recorded 64 different hellos and got 320 participants to listen and rate those hellos on 10 different personality traits. What's amazing is that per participants were accurately able to guess personality traits based on voice tone with just this simple hello. So we convey a lot of our personality in our voice and that's why I encourage you to stay with the natural end of your voice tone. I never want you to go lower than what's natural or higher than what's natural because then you start to lose that really authentic personality trait. I want you to include more emotionality in your words. That's how you show authentic personality. We talked about earlier how it's really important to talk about issues that you're passionate about. And so this is one way that we can convey our personalities to bring up stories, um, examples, and people who make us really feel. That way we showcase our expressiveness in our voice tone. We talked about the importance of expressiveness and that is how you do it, is by adding emotionality into your voice tone. And lastly, we can convey attraction, what, who and what we are attracted to. So research finds that your voice changes when you talk to more attractive people. In fact, naturally, instinctively, both sexes use a lower pitched voice. I found this study interesting and hopefully this now is going to bring it all together for you that not only do we want to consciously use a lower pitched voice, that when we're really attracted to someone, our voices naturally drop. And so when we're courting someone on the phone, having a low voice tone also is a great nonverbal way to signal to them, yes, I'm attracted to you. The follow-up study to this I think is just as interesting. So what they did is they had independent raters evaluate different voice samples. And a couple of those were the voice samples of the people who were speaking to other attractive people. In other words, they were the samples where their voice tone was lower because they were speaking to this attractive person. And independent raters evaluated those voice clips of the attracted people as more pleasant. So somehow, subconsciously, all of us, even if someone's not speaking directly to us, we like a voice that is speaking to someone who is attractive. In other words, our own attracted feelings make us sound more pleasant. So based on what we've learned in the entire course, plus these four aspects of voice tone, what are the tips for courtship dating? First, I think this goes without saying, but use video chat. Yes, it's great to have the phone, but whenever possible, you want to add in that body language so that A, you can read them better, and B, you can showcase your own nonverbal cues. Okay, I just had to put that in there first. Second, one thing you can do is while you're speaking to them is you can actually look at their picture. So um, when you're uh, talking to someone, especially if it's a new, a new person you haven't met yet in person, bring up their profile and that way you actually are reminded of your attractive feelings for them and you feel like you're having a deeper connection because you're able to visualize them. That will A, make your voice more attractive and more pleasant because hopefully you're attracted to the person you're speaking with. And B, it helps you, um, it helps your brain visualize more quickly. Second, definitely you want to practice dynamic listening. So we talked about dynamic listening in the relationship connectivity section, um, using the aha, uh -huh, yes, I agree, oh, interesting. All of those um, cues that show that you're listening, um, that's a wonderful way to increase connection and engagement in a conversation for both men and women. You also can try mirroring here. So we talked about mirroring in terms of body language, and I mentioned briefly you could also use your voice to mirror. So remember that mirroring shouldn't be used as a trick. It should be used as a way to show them that you're willing to adapt and engage with them on their level. So what you can do is you can match their speed. So if they're a fast talker, you can speed up your, your pace. If they're a slow talker, you can slow it down. You can also match their cadence. So if they have a, um, a way of speaking, you can sort of match that. Uh, the example that I give is I was pitching a, a southern gentleman on a, on a speaking event and he not only spoke more slowly, but had that southern drawl cadence. So I didn't mirror his southern drawl. Um, it was something like, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Like, you know, that's the kind of drawl. I didn't mirror the drawl, but I did mirror the cadence. So I slowed down my rate of speaking, and I said to him, I started speaking in the southern drawl cadence. And this is an advanced tip. You can practice it with friends. So what I said sounded more like this. I would really love to come and speak to your group. I think it would be a fantastic way for managers to understand their body language. 
right? So that's a much slower, much more Southern pace than I use, but I actually could hear his sigh of relief on the other end of the line because he was so happy that oh, I was finally speaking on his level. You could also mirror using words. So one of the things that we talk about in our uh, Power of Body Language course is that people typically use the kind of words based on their learning style. So if they like to visualize and see things, they'll say, oh, I could see how that would work, or I can't picture that. They use a lot of visual words. So if you want to, you can also start using the words they use as if you're um, speaking with their same tools. Again, you want to practice this to make sure that it doesn't sound creepy. It's, it's really a sign of respect that you're just trying to get on their same page. I already mentioned this, but breathing to keep your voice low. Now, I don't want the heavy <sighs> breathing because that would be the opposite of the kind of flirting that you want. But both men and women should practice keeping their voice nice and low, keeping their vocal cords loose by speaking on the out breath. Um, never interrupt. So study after study finds that any kind of interruption um, even if it's filling someone else's word because you think that you know what they're going to say, is incredibly um, disrespectful. So people automatically assume the other person is pushy, aggressive, and hard to connect with. So always be very careful to let them finish their sentences. Next, don't do anything else. So when you are cleaning up your kitchen, checking email, uh, cleaning up your desk, putting on makeup, whatever, that distraction absolutely comes through in your voice and it changes that personality aspect. When we talked about personality coming through in your voice, if you're doing something else, it can change the cadence, tone, and pitch of your voice. The only thing you should be doing is um, ha looking at their picture, so have their profile or their Facebook pictures up in front of you. Um, and then the next one, which is you can have a mirror if you want. Now, I only do this when I was practicing. I, I actually found it extremely interesting to see what kind of facial punctuators and um, body language I was using while I was speaking to people. I did this when I was doing sales calls. So if you put a mirror next to your computer, I want you to look at two different things. And this is fascinating, right? This is the best way to get to know yourself. First, you want to see what facial expressions are you making. So are you making a lot of negative facial expressions? Studies have found that we can identify 16 different types of smiles just from voice tone alone. So if you're showing a fake smile or anger or sadness, that comes through in your voice and you will be shocked at what you see, at least I was. So looking for facial expressions. And the second thing is looking for shifts in body posture or body movement. So if you're talking to the person uh, on the other end and you suddenly cross your arms or you're leaning forward, that's a great way to start to get in the habit of noticing what you do when you're in a natural state. So if you're wondering, God, on a date, I have no idea what I do. Do I lean? Do I head tilt? Um, do I cross in people's boundary? You can film yourself or talk in front of a mirror on the phone to gauge a little bit better of how you do look because you don't want to film yourself on a date. That would be a little bit awkward, but you can easily do it on the phone. So that's another trick that you can use for both phone courtship as well as in-person co courtship. And the last one is if you can't think of things to say, you always want to keep keep the conversation going, you can use our killer conversation starters. I included a link to that. It's a free article we have on our website on um, below this post, as well as 10 conversation-worthy books. Now again, in this course, we're not talking about the verbal side of courtship, but I do think it's really important to keep their brain engaged, keep their dopamine flowing, which we talk about in our free influence course. So definitely check out those uh, two articles, the conversation starters and the 10 conversation worthy books, as well as the free influence course if you want to get more into the verbal side.